let's discuss on the most important factor why do ivfs fail i had a great embryo you said i had a good endometrium you said the embryo transfer went smooth but still i didn't conceive why didn't i conceive understanding the areas where and things might be different is very important when a seemingly great cycle did not result in a pregnancy among the several factors that can lead to absence of implantation one of the most important thing is embryo aneuploidy see at every maternal age it's very very critical because the age of the lady matters much much more than the age of the gentleman the effect of age of women on the embryo is more marked this is because the quantity and quality of eggs deteriorate as the age progresses usually there is a mild reduction of quantity and quality from 30 to 35 and after 35 there is an accelerated loss of both quantity and quality in women now when i'm talking about quantity and quality of the egg or the gametes in the female we are talking about abnormalities in an embryo which is very unique for maternal age which we call it as aneuploidy which means there is either one chromosome more or one chromosome less in the cells of the embryo and this results in all the factors like lack of implantation biochemical pregnancy miscarriages and even a down syndrome so preventing aneuploidy is the most important challenge or most important trick that we have to establish to achieve a successful pregnancy so a seemingly normal embryo also an embryo which looked a grade aa may also have a uh, abnormal chromosomal pattern so testing the embryo for aneuploidy is something we call it as pgta that is pre implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy now with pgta we come to know which are the embryos that are normal and by transferring them we can reduce the time to pregnancy so in that situation doing the pgta to know which are the embryos that are normal will help us reduce the time to pregnancy and also have a good outcome in the uh, pregnancy in fact it is known that miscarriage rates are are lesser in women who achieve with the pgt embryo rather than untested embryo the other factors are with respect to the uterus so if there are situations that have been missed with a conventional ultrasound which can be picked up possibly by a 3d scan or by a hysteroscopy would include one small endometrial polyps or it could be adenomyotic uterus or there could be fibroids which are distorting the shape of the uterus or last but not the least a hydrosalpings that is a condition wherein the tubes may be swollen with fluid which may get discharged into the uterine cavity and lead to lack of implantation now if in the event that there is a failure of a transfer it is very important to rule out all these factors before going ahead with any further transfer the other factor that can cause failed implantation are poorly controlled diabetes or systemic diseases that are not well managed like if the lady is a hypothyroid but has not been taking her thyroid supplements correctly or the testing hasn't been done recently to see how the thyroid status is with respect to diabetes whether hb1c has been tested regularly and seen whether diabetes is under good control for her to go ahead or it could be hypertensive disorders wherein the blood pressure is uncontrolled and most of the time the lady has a high blood pressure which can lead to lack of implantation of course other hormone disturbances like hyperplatinemia if not treated correctly can also lead to lack of implantation so it's very important that all the systemic hormonal and metabolic disorders are well managed prior to going ahead with a transfer i'm assuming that these things are done and then if there is a failure one other important reason why embryo may fail to implant is a male factor infertility so if there is a severe male factor infertility wherein the motility of the sperms is near zero or if the morphology of the sperms is near zero you hardly see any normal sperms within the sperm sample in such situation also it can be that much more hard to get one good normal embryo for a transfer in situations wherein there is severe male factor infertility one could consider treatments like sperm selection techniques there are some tests that help in taking away all fragmented sperms and giving us the most normal population of sperms for enhancing the uh, quality of embryo some of these sperm selection techniques would be microfluidics or max magnetic assisted cell sorting or uh, imc wherein you know you test the sperm under high magnification before you go ahead and use the sperm for fertilizing the egg these are strategies that can help you in improvising the quality of the embryo and there in turn improvising the outcome of a embryo transfer so last but not the least wherein things might have gone haywire is uh, what was the protocol that was used for doing the ivf there are some injections which especially urinary products which can affect the quality of eggs so however large studies have not shown a difference between urinary product and a recombinant medication but however recombinant medications we need to understand are 
the most purified version of the injection that is FSH and LH. And using recombinant might improvise the quality of egg and also can help in improvising the quality of embryos. So in the event that a previous cycle has failed, it's important to consider and move towards a recombinant drug. Apart from that, you one may also want to consider a protocol different from what was used before in the future cycle. This is mainly with the idea that a different protocol might help in getting even better quality of embryos and improvise the outcome. Of course, laboratory practices. Now, how do we actually decide on laboratory practices? This is usually at Aspire, we take a call much before the egg collection procedure, wherein depending on the age of the person, depending on the reserve, that is the egg number and the projected egg quantity that we may receive on the day of egg pickup, we decide as to how we are going to fertilize the eggs, whether it's going to be a conventional IVF, wherein we keep the egg and sperm together for natural fertilization, or whether we are going to do an egg sea, wherein we select a sperm and inject into the egg. This is something that we discussed the previous day of pickup and take a decision as to which is the modality that we are going to take for fertilizing the egg. And then culturing it till whether day 3 or day 5, this decision will be based on how many got fertilized, how many are dividing. And of course, there are some strategies that might help in improvising like use of calcium ionophore for activation of eggs, use of sperm selection techniques. If there is a high DNA fragmentation in the sperm sample, we do something called as MAX, Magnetic Assisted Cell Sorting, which is known to help us in getting the most normal or unfragmented sperms in the post-processing sample, which can help us get better blastulation, that is better embryo development and also better outcome. So reviewing the whole parameters of how the cycle was managed is a very, very important uh, factor of managing a IVF failure. How do you manage once there is an IVF failure? Now suppose there is a requirement for a repeat IVF. How do we analyze or how do we try and optimize from the previous performance? Well, there are a list of things that we do. One would be reviewing the stimulation. How was the stimulation in the past? Whether What were the drugs that we used? At what size of the follicle was the trigger given? What kind of trigger was given? What was the percentage of M2 oocytes in the number of oocytes that we have had? So stimulation review is one aspect. That is the clinical record review is an extremely important thing to decide how we are going to handle the next cycle. Second is the embryology review. Now, when I'm talking about embryological review, Review. that means the embryological performance review how were the eggs fertilized whether was it conventional IVF or was it an ICSI what was the M2 oocyte rate that means whether if she had formed 10 oocytes was it that she had 7 to 8 M2s or she had had only 1 or 2 mature oocytes now that gives us a clue how we should be managing the next trigger whether we should be dealing the trigger by a couple of days whether we should adopt some strategies to synchronize the cohort better there are times when we will manage the lab in a way that we divide the X 50% 50% and take 50% for IVF 50% for ICSI which means say a lady forms 14 eggs then we keep 7 for conventional natural fertilization and 7 for intracytoplasmic fermentation in that event it's very important to know how the blastulation was in each category one is how was the quality of the blasts and second is how many blasts developed the benchmark is usually 40 percent at least 40 percent of fertilized oocytes should give us good blastocysts if the blastocyst formation rate is lesser then again reviewing the chromosomal parameters of the parents reviewing the stimulation protocol makes sense so depending on how the embryological parameters are is how we are going to decide how we are going to manage the subsequent cycle the other important factor is about testing the whole gamut of systemic conditions like thyroid prolactin uh, latest sugar uh, hemoglobin and of course some vitamin levels and if there is anything suboptimal correct all that before venturing further into a next stimulation the other important factor is about uterine evaluation so there have been some transfers pregnancies haven't happened then it's very very critical for us to check the uterus thoroughly either by a hysteroscopy a 3d ultrasound or even a laparoscopy sometimes if there is suspected hydrosulfings so what are we ruling out on all these tests one, so any signs of endometritis, that is inflammation of the uterus, any signs of polyps within the uterine cavity, or hydrosalpines, that is swelling of the tubes, which can discharge into the uterine cavity and reduce the pregnancy rate. Last but not the least, if the cavity looks a good triangle, is the cavity uh, deranged by any myoma or fibroid or things like that. And if there are fibroids, anything more than four or five centimeter, it might be a good idea to go ahead with myomectomy, that is removal of fibroid, before going ahead with the next transfer. 
So the most critical and the most important step for a successful IVF is embryo transfer. Of course, every step is very important to get good embryos. But however, the time when the embryos are being put back into the uterus has to be an extremely smooth one and a good one for us to have a good implantation. So when we are reviewing the previous embryo transfer failures, the important factor to also notify or understand is how did the embryo transfer go. So if there are any signs of difficulty of embryo transfer, then it has to be worked upon to make it smooth in the next time. Now, how do we do this? There are certain strategies. One, if last time there has been a use of a stiff catheter to enter the uterine cavity, you might want to consider something called a cervical dilatation wherein you dilate the cervix and keep it so that it's easy for next transfer. The other way is if soft catheter has been used but there was difficulty in entry, then it's important to map the uterus cervical canal by a mock embryo transfer. A mock embryo transfer is a trial embryo transfer that is done much earlier than an actual embryo transfer to identify how the uterus cervical length is directed or the canal is directed. It's also important to mimic the same situation like an actual embryo transfer during mock embryo transfer and to note down how the transfer catheter navigates inside and the same thing to be followed at the time of the transfer. So with failed embryo transfer, one need not be very disheartened. Yes, it feels like a failure, but it's important to carefully review all the parameters of the previous transfer, be it the stimulation protocol, the lab management, the grading of embryos, the embryo transfer details, to review all of it so that we improvise the management for the next transfer. So when they form good embryos, a couple should be reassured that if not that, at some point that the lady would conceive. Because when embryos do develop well, it is just a chance factor sometimes that you know it doesn't work. So by improvising, you have a higher chance of reaching a pregnancy. At present, the limitation of medical science is that by looking at the embryos, we we are not able to identify which are the ones that actually go up to a baby state. But what we know for sure is that when the embryos are developing well, it's just a matter of time. Whether it's the first set of embryos or the second set or the third set, eventually successful implantation would happen. So it's important to work on the factors that might have led to failure and having an introspection into the whole matter will only improvise the outcome later. Fertility treatment is about perseverance and it's important that the couple has to be perseverant to realize the dream of parenthood.